Hey guys, greetings and salutations. Dan the Wolfman, catch you2.com. Today I'm proposing a question to you. Is a seven shot 357 Magnum revolver actually a viable CCW carry option? Just like the one I'm carrying on my hip right now. This is a Taylor Special Edition three and seven shot 357 Magnum Ruger GP100. But of course there's also the 686 plus and there's the new Taurus 692. Now both the Smith and the Ruger, generally you're gonna see the two and a half, two and a half inch barrel or four, 4.2 inch barrel versions. The three inch is probably more ideal for carry. I have a separate video on that because it's gonna give you the ballistics that you need, the ease of carry. Guys, when you're talking 357 Magnum, I highly recommend a 3-inch barrel if it's something you're actually going to want to carry. 3-inch is the beautiful. It's balanced really, really well. Yes, this firearm's clear. Look at that 7-shot cylinder. Very strong lockup. You want a 3-inch barrel because it balances nicely. It's the perfect balance. Now, most of these out there are 4.2 inches. It's a little long for carry. Or the, the two and a half inch version. This Taylor exclusive is three inch barrel, seven shot. So pretty rare here. And uh, definitely the fiber optic front is a huge preference over their black uh, blade post. I love the looks of the unfluted cylinder. But three inch barrel, guys, going back to that, it's going to balance really 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 nice and more importantly it gives you the ballistics just about probably like six percent eight percent less of full power 357 magnum from a four inch barrel but it gives you a big huge step up from a two inch barrel 357 magnums and two inch barrel ain't so great two and a half is kind of okay but three inches is going to give you a lot more ballistics uh advantage that way, whether it's a mild, modern hollow point, it's going to do a really, really good job. And if you're using old school, which I think I'm going to go old school, federal 125 grain and 158 grain semi-jacketed hollow points here, you're going to still get great velocity and perhaps even better performance than the 4-inch. So get a little less expansion. It's, it's the right balance between getting the expansion and the penetration uh, you need with a lot of the cheaper ammo. So there's a lot of reasons why the three inch also it's going to be better for retention than being able to have a four inch or 4.2 inch barrel grabbed. Um, but especially for winter carry option, it's just getting a little cold now where I can still wear a t-shirt, but I can wear this nice concealment vest. So um, that allows me to carry, but I could carry this with a t-shirt and jeans, whatever in shorts. I don't know if I'll carry it in the summer or not yet, but is it a viable carry option? Um, so let's talk about what stats are out there. Most situations are handled simply by a defensive display of a firearm. I've done that twice myself in the last two years alone. And I've had two other situations where I felt like it was pretty sketchy. Um, and boy, I felt good having a uh, two times at, at both at gas stations where it was very nice knowing that I had a firearm on me. Um, for a long time, people have quoted three shots, three yards, three seconds or less. Because a lot of things are going to start at the robbery phase, at one and a half, two, three yards, right? And then a shot, and then a shot, and a shot as the guy runs away, you know, from two yards to five yards. So um, I think for the most part, that's true. Certainly a lot of situations now and more and more in the FBI stats show that in my situations, personally, I know that often involve multiple opponents. That's true, but usually they scatter like cockroaches. They're not expecting an armed resistance. The 125 at 1450, that's screaming stuff, which matches the original badass loadings from Federal. Be the test ammo. Notice. So, actually, not a bad group. For me, I'm obviously not a great shot, but that's a fist group. I'm not Paul Harrell. 10 yards though, 38 special plus P. Just over, just over a fist group. Not bad. The results of that are I went for the same target on accident, kinda, and uh, well, I still got my fist grouping 10 rounds. 
All right, let's see what the recoil is like. Fioki 158 grain, rated at 1,220 feet per second. This is pretty hot stuff. All right, let's bring it in and see how we did. Woo! Magnum for us. I said, woo! Um, generally, I am a guy who's carried pistols my entire life. I've, I've shot pistols my entire life. But is a revolver like this a viable option? Well, no, there's really three on the market that I think are viable options. And Taurus haters, the 692, certain stuff like the A56 and the 692, I think they're good. I haven't gotten one yet. Both of them interest me. Um, but if you look at their warranty on their website, now certain firearms, only if you register within 30 days, like the A56, like the 692, like the G2C, like the G3 hasn't been added yet, but I'm assuming it will be, um, you still get the lifetime warranty. Basically, they're cleaning up their quality control, and um, at least on certain items. I think they should scrap the stuff that's shit and focus on the stuff that's good. Let me know if you agree. Um, but I'm, I want to get the 692 myself as a training aid for this because I can throw in the 9mm cylinder in the 692 and practice cheaply. It also could be carried both. Not like I would ever do something like that. We'll get into that later. But even if you carry, um, I'll get into it now, even if you carry 17 plus 1.9 millimeter, even if you carry whatever, the way I was trained by Detroit cops and, and learning about Chicago cops and NYPD cops and Jim Cirillo and the, the people that have really been there and done that, I, I like having a weapon available to both hands because you never know for a whole lot of reasons, right? And, and pocket and etc. Anyway, I've always, no matter what, I think you should carry a second weapon. But um, I think the revolver, especially with seven shots, I was tempted to get it in 10 millimeter, but I think a seven shot 357, not a two inch barrel, but a three inch or a four inch barrel, I think it is still a good viable option. Number one, having a revolver is going to make you a better shooter if you practice in double action, it's going to make you a better shooter at everything. Um, the 357 has always been known as a good stopper. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think overall, ballistically, getting into tissue crush, you look at something like a 45 HST, nothing is going to beat that. Nothing. No other caliber is going to beat the amount of tissue damage. 10 millimeter comes close because it penetrates farther, but doesn't expand as, expand as much. But really, old 45, um, really really does it i think 357 did it and did it for other reasons because in overall pistols suck as stoppers the biggest reason there is a stop is a psychological stop well what are the reasons you're going to get a psychological stop it's going to be because of the loud bang and flash hello 357 magnum number one number two my theory um is that any kind of testing that you see, whether it's clear gel, mostly real ballistics, whether it's ballistics with board in front, like FBI protocol, pine board, especially if you put bones in front, meat targets, Paul Harrell, etc. Um, and Paul Harrell shout out and um, uh, Mr. Holster shout out if you want to learn about revolvers. After all these years, I'm learning about revolvers. HR Funk. So... If you like that stuff, HR Funk, Paul Harrell, Mr. Holster, you should check them out. Really well. Okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in my case here. Bang. Case. Speed loader. And obviously, I'm not perfect at this yet. HKS, seven shot speed loader. And there we go. To continue, the second reason why I think 357 Magnum always did well is because even in bone tests and everything else, we see a heck of a lot of damage um, with 357 Magnum, like old school high velocity loads, right? We see a heck of a lot of damage in those first however m amount of inches 
And I think that relates in the human body, at least if you're hitting rib or sternum, I think that relates because the skin has the most nerves. And I think that fib factor is more with 357 Magnum than other cartridges. The fib factor, if I've been shot, happens and that leads way more stops because of psychological stops. That is my theory. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. If you look at testing, like I've watched every test from every YouTuber there is on every cartridge, I think there is some truth to that, more so than other reasons we thought that pistol rounds did all that in the beginning. But, you know, deer that have been shot and everyone else, yeah, it's making a big hole up front, big hole through those ribs. There's a really big actual permanent wound cavity caused by whatever ribs and velocity and everything. It's not just temporary stretch cavity that isn't real. I think there's some realness to it, uh, at least when it hits bone. Don't know about like a gut shot, but at least when it hits bone and stuff, I think it lets you know you've been hit. And pistols relatively suck as stoppers, so a psychological stop, increasing that's a good thing. So statistics, most three shots, right? Um, if you look at Tom Givens, 8 to 11 shots, I think the guys that shot eight or nine shots at Tom Gibbons instructors, they were 1911 guys using a seven or eight round mag plus one. If you look at guys that used 11 shots, nine millimeter, a lot of times those last two or three shots are questionable. Were they really necessary to stop it? I don't know. But as long as you got speed loader options, I got three speed loaders on them. You speed loader can hold it um, here. Um, easy to carry in the front pocket. I got another video on speed loaders for speed strips. Pull it out, whip it out, load two at a time. I need shot speed strip for my seven shot revolver in case you bobble one or two, which happens. So, um, an easy to carry speed strip in the back pocket. So, as long as you got other ammo, or more importantly, in my opinion, a backup, which could be a small LCP in the front pocket or a 38 snub or a 357 snub, um, you know. Or a P365 or a Hellcat. It could be, you know, anything in your pocket. Or it could be something else on the hip, like this 45. You know, even without seven shots and, and a speed loader or speed strip, you're probably good to go. And so that's the question I raise. Is a seven shot specifically, seven shot, 357 Magnum, is that a viable CCW option? I'm starting to lean towards it is. And I'm a guy who always... Carry, carries the highest capacity and a lot of ammo on me. Um, but for someone like me, if I have that and an LCP in the front pocket, well, now I'm like in the very rare case, not only do I get a reload for my primary, but I got a secondary LCP or 856 ultralight or something like that. You know, I, I you, you, you're, you're pretty well set. And as far as multiples, well, if it's an up close robbery, the loud bang sends them scattering like cockroaches. There are, has been other cases where I was at, you know, multiple people in a car is obviously looking for trouble. Well, that's when, yeah, having high capacity uh, might come into play. But I think at that seven shot GP100, 686 plus, Tour 692, I think it's an option. Let me know. Especially if you're old school like me <laughs> and you carry a 45 AARP backup or you carry like an LCP in your offside front pocket or a snubby in your offside front pocket. I, I think then it definitely makes it uh, viable as a CCDW option. I would like to hear your comments. Let me know what you guys think. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. I'm Damon the Wolfman, and I will catch you on the flip side. Thank you very much. Yo, homie, is that my briefcase? You want it back? Nice start. There's one more guy.